Huh? I thought it's dead. Yeah, you know what we gotta do? Watch this. Take this stuff. Put it in here. What color is that, Will? What is this? This. What color is this? It's your favorite color, red, remember? Or were you just saying red because daddy likes green? That, that's what it is. Sticky, sticky. Okay. All right, look through here. Come over here and look through there. Go. He's in the hole, Dad. Watch your finger, William. Dad is coming in. Watch your finger. Watch your finger. There, babe. Not yet. Hmm. Getting there, but not yet. Get the Chevy, man, John. Yeah. supposed to be here. How's that sound? What's not supposed to be here? William. <laughs> Gonna break his eardrum. Put the camera down. Hey, Grant, give me a big sledgehammer, please. Uh-oh, no, don't put that down, Will. What do you forget? Oh, oh. Is it hot? Watch out, Will. Spray, spray. What I am. I'm get the light. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, we're getting 
not quite there, but we're getting there.
probably put a new flapper disc on that thing and take it right down. Yeah. See the wear on that. Just there. Okay, so I'll talk about what we're doing here. That is the uh, gauge wheel, and they come with bearings or bushings for the bearings, and they go on here. There's not much wear on this. Maybe a tiny little bit of wear there that we can deal with because that thing doesn't really move too much. That's really just uh, pressure, force from hitting things as it goes. So what we have on this side is new bear new bushings. These bushings were worn pretty badly along with that shaft that he is rebuilding there. And you can see that it, it kind of blew its top off on that one but it never did make it all the way to the steel and besides it doesn't much matter because I just put new bushings in there and I replace these bushings every year because uh, what it'll do is the tire well it'll wear and it will all that wear and all that bending you can see how it's just wearing that steel away it's actually wore quite a bit of that away but it hasn't worn the tire but he's just building up the shaft that's should I build this up or leave that uh, I would build them both up. I mean, I don't know if you can or not. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just going to take a lot more grinding. Yeah. And that's fine. Get them to where they belong. I don't think it's bent. It might be bent a little. I don't know. I don't well, think so. One way or the other, we'll get that fixed and that'll be good. So we've been working on all of this stuff. Um, we put new, these little saw teeth in here. This is the stopper for the header. Put new ones in there. I have new ones of those. That one, it's okay, but they get worn and then they slap around in there. And last year we hit a, it was a groundhog hole or something and it actually spread the thing. So we had to replace them both because they were just junk at that point. Uh, so everything's good here. And what I need to do, which is quite simple, I had to put a new bearing in here. Uh, Cody had yeah, a little bit of a misunderstanding and ended up taking the whole auger out, which is fine. It was no big deal. Uh, but we had to put it all back together. But he broke the bearing, so I had to put a new bearing in. And I am going to go ahead and drill that hole into that thing. And we're gonna put we're gonna put that greasable link in there, make that grease circ work. And that should that should work out okay. He took the he did take the little things out of there which need to be replaced now. Um, but I'm just here working on these things, trying to get everything where it belongs, like that, which won't work because I don't have the stupid. Uh, yeah, I gotta put the washers and stuff on there. I didn't take this side apart. Cody did so. But anyway, I will be the guy putting it back together like right now. I have to slide that whole assembly back up in there, get the bolts on it, lift it, get the bolts on there, and I'm going to wait for Grant to show up to do that. And, uh, yeah, because he should be a little wary. He went to go strap down a load of hay. That's what he was doing for tomorrow's job, tomorrow's load. Uh, but, yeah, so that's what's going on. Let me get on to something a little more interesting. All right, so I ground that weld that Cody put on. I ground it down. Uh, we got the new bushing on there. It is bent. You can see that it's bent. So what I'm going to do is quite simple. I'm going to pry it back down and hopefully get it where it belongs. If not, it's going to need to, a new part. I'll have to get a new piece, which I really don't want to do. But you know what? Such is life, you know? That's what you got to do. So it's coming together pretty good. Uh, we worked on the other side. Uh, yeah, Tim's got problems with his Subaru. Yeah, troubles with the Bruba, Ruba Ruba. And this guy here, watch this. Look at that. There. So that's a lantern by Milwaukee. You can hang it wherever you want. I uh, kind of like it. We'll see how it goes, but uh, maybe you can see what I'm doing here. We've got the chains kind of mocked up to make sure that everything is good. This sprocket here 
all obviously this whole transmission is new but this little spot here I didn't have a key so the key that was in there had a little bit of wear to it and uh, what we did me and Grant did was I loctited the son of a bitch in and uh, what we'll do tomorrow is just go right on ahead and put the rest of it together all the tensioners I got brand new chain and I buy American made chain let me kill this light here because I can where the hell are you no there it is uh, I buy American made chain uh, it's really kind of hard to come by if you don't know where to look but I do so what I do is I actually buy this chain right here John Deere 60 heavy 10 foot made Good morning on I, you know, this is the end of the video, right? And you're still here, which is good. It means you're a loyal subscriber, and I can talk a little more freely than I would at the beginning of the video where all the libtards live. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, we're, we're just working on this baler, getting things ready to rock and roll for, you know, this coming year. And uh, it's just normal shop work. It's kind of boring at times. I find it exciting uh, to be doing the work, but you know, eh, a lot of people don't like to watch it. And uh, of course, you can see that in the uh, in the daily uh, the view counts, which is fine. I don't really care uh, about the view counts. I'm glad you're here. But if you want to go elsewhere, you can do that. And uh, you know, it's perfectly okay by me. Uh, but you know, I just, I like it when, uh, you watch another video and it's like, okay, so, Hey, we're going to fix this. And then boom, it's fixed. And you have no idea how they did it. And, uh, I kind of like to show the process because that's what this channel is about. It's about helping people be able to fix their own equipment and save themselves a shit ton of money. Uh, because it is very expensive to send this baler out to say Messix or any other Chrome dealer, uh, that would be doing the work on it. Uh, the first time I sent the baler out, when it was new, it was a year old, and they said, hey, we, we can do the warranty work on it, and, uh, you know, you come out and film it, and life will be good. And uh, I was like, oh, okay. So the next year, I was like, wow, this worked out pretty good. I got a three-year warranty with this thing, because I paid $6,000 for it. And, uh, oh, excuse me, coffee. Anyway, uh yeah, the second year I went out, I, I sent it out, and uh, I got a bill. You know, it's like, hey, wait a minute, I got a warranty on this. Well, Chrome's warranty doesn't work that way. If you replaced it once on warranty, the second time it's abuse. I was like, you motherfuckers took $6,000 from me, so I would have a three-year warranty on all parts and pieces. Well, I will let you know that there are... Uh, is a warranty on parts and pieces 90 days after you purchase them so if you bought this thing these parts and 90 days later they failed which is very simple to do like you know these transmissions I could I could easily you know in 90 days say hey what what the hell is this these freaking things are all shot you know which I wouldn't do because it's just to me normal wear and tear but on the more bigger things like those slip clutches and stuff I did have them blow up within the 90 days and replaced under warranty parts warranty which is a good you know which it was good but I got a bill for like 20 God, what the hell was that? It was like $27,000 for parts and labor on basically about half of what I'm doing right now to this baler. And uh, that was a tough nut to swallow. It's like, you know, I could have bought the parts for, you know, $7,000. That's all they were, about $7,000 worth of parts. And the rest was labor because they spent several weeks dealing with it. Uh, it takes time. And when you're only working an eight-hour day and it's not your dedicated... Uh, dedicated shop monkey there uh yeah then then it gets mighty expensive and i don't think i don't think it matters whether it takes five hours to do the job or 50 hours to do the job it's book time you know so if the book crumbs book says hey you know what it takes seven hours to do this particular thing and uh it took you four you don't get charged four you get charged the seven so that's just the way most shops work but anyway uh that's what this channel is all about and you know even if you've never seen a chrome baler at least you'll know a little bit of its functionality and uh the way it works uh you know and that's that's just life there and thanks for watching because this video just got really long 
four more minutes long. Now enjoy the rest of your day.